have the word of the Lord. I would like to invite Minister Claude Manning and he will be coming to share with us today. God bless him in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Truly he is wonderful, he's great, he's mighty. Amen. His name is glorious. His power is great. His church is forever. His kingdom is everlasting. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the one which was, which is to come. He's the Almighty. He was before all things and by him all things consist. He cannot die yet. He died for our sin. He lives forevermore. He's high on, 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 in heaven yet he's down in my heart. Praise the name of Jesus. I wonder. I marvel. But I, I believe that Jesus Jesus, his Lord, his God, he's all in all. Amen. Praise God. There's no way to God but by him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. All must come through him. All things are by him. All creation is for him. Praise the name of Jesus. And on they always stand before him in judgment. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I, I don't ever get excited when I talk about the name of Jesus, praise God. Praise God. I, I, you know, my friends, uh, my brother and sisters from Pentecostal Lighthouse are here. And I tell you, I don't like songs that don't have his name in it. I don't want to sing about God. I want to sing about Jesus. Everybody sings about God. The Muslim sings about God. The Rastafarian sing about God. But I sing about Jesus. The Bible says, make mention that his name is exalted. The name of the Lord is strong and mighty tower. The righteous run in Jesus and they are afraid. I love the name of Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. At his name, demons tremble. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory, power, honor, dominion. To the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God from the saints of Pentecostal Lighthouse, King Street. And from our pastor who is in another part of the vineyard this morning. Ministering to the glory of God. I greet Presbyter Crooks and the saints here. Many of you were here when I left here what? A long time ago, 17 or so years ago. Praise God, it's good to be home. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah, Stephen, this is home. <laughs> this is home. You know, all of us have a home where we were born, you know. So I was born in a little home in Moko. And then years later, I left and lived somewhere else. So this is where I was born. Praise God. 17th of January, 1994, the late brother Rushton and brother Ramsey. Ties me in that pool there. 6th of February 1994. Right at this altar here, I received the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of Jesus. This is home. Praise God. There's a song we used to sing here many years ago. This, anybody remember that song? This is our home. Praise God. You need to revive it, Sister Cena, if you remember it. Praise God. Let's turn the Bible very quickly. Praise God. We don't have a whole lot of time. I'm used to preaching with a clock in front of me, so I don't get carried away. Somebody needs to keep me on track. I'm going to turn to St. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 24 and 25, and then we pick it up again at verse 39, and read to verse 44. Praise God. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dwelt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And Mary rose in those days and went to the hill country, verse 39, with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence in this that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. I touched on this somewhere else a week ago. And today I think I want to go into all of it. As we look on the topic, I'll give it pregnant with the promise, but hiding from the power. Pregnant with the promise, but hiding from the power. Pastor Crooks of the Prayer, please. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your love. As your man's servants then to share with us the word of the Lord, we are praying, God, that you will unctionize him from above. Mix the word with your anointing. Those in our midst, God, who have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost are baptized in Jesus' name. We are praying, God, that the spirit of conviction will flow within their hearts. We recognize that the church doesn't have enough time left on this earth. And we are praying today, God, that you will prepare the mind of your people. And we pray, God, that you will speak to your man's servant as we ask these your mercies in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. A couple of weeks back, I thought I'd take some time to instruct or caution the saints whom I give leadership to at King Street. Because it's a paradox, I think, that in the season that we have traditionally used to remember the birth of Jesus Christ, I think more people forget him than at any other time. We purchased Christmas trees at great expense but we ignore the true vine. We decorate with Christmas lights while ignoring the light of the world. We enjoy sumptuous meals, but we don't partake of the bread of life. We drink ourselves sick on alcohol while our th soul thirst for living water. So at the time when we should be seeking that which we need the most, we give lip service while our hearts turn to that which our flesh craves. And thus is fulfilled the saying that is said, these people honor me with their mouths and draw nigh to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. For in vain do they worship me, teaching for their doctrine the commandments of men. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. But I want to say to someone that this time our focus should not be towards some ancient manger in Jerusalem seeking for a baby. But our eyes should be lifted toward the eastern skies expecting the return of the king. Praise the name of Jesus. And so we have the idea, but having become, become disconnected from the author of the salvation that we proclaim, we have lost sight of the power that is inherently tied up in the advent story of Jesus Christ. For this is a great saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christmas is not about jingle bells. 
Christmas is about preparing for the trumpet. Christmas is not about riding in one horse open sleigh. Christmas is preparing for the rapture of the believer. Christmas is not about Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Christmas is about the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. Christmas is not about myth and stories. Christmas is about the gospel truth. And if we have lost sight of that, We've lost sight of the power. We've lost sight of the power. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father of the increase. Of his covenant and peace, there will be no end. Uh, one thing I wanted to understand, I learned years ago in English grammar. When you talk about the third person and you use the word shall, it becomes an absolute imperative. This is not a choice. Whether you want it or not, his name shall be called wonderful. Whether you like him or not, his name shall be called counselor. Whether you recognize him or not, his name shall be called mighty God. Whether you accept him or not. His name shall be called Prince of Peace. And whether you believe it or not, his name is the Everlasting Father. He is Jehovah, the Lord of Glory. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible said none of the princes of this world knew this. For if they had known it, they would not have killed the Lord of glory. Today we know it. Today we tell you, with Jesus, the one who died, the one who rose from the dead, is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only absolute pathway to come back into fellowship with Jesus Christ. Now I don't care how much you jump and shake. If you don't know that, you know nothing. I praise the name of Jesus. I praise the name of Jesus. Zachariah was in the temple praying. And the angels came. The angel came and said to him, fear not. Your prayer has been heard. So he had been praying for this thing. But when it came to pass, he, the angel ended by saying, because you did not believe. Pregnant with the promise, but hiding from the power. The angel told Zacharias that your child will go before Messiah in the spirit and power of Elijah. But when Elizabeth became pregnant, she went and hid herself. Israel had been waiting for over 2,000 years for the Messiah that was promised. She got the message that in her womb was a forerunner. But instead of going forth in excitement and telling people he can't be far because he here is the sign. She went and hid herself, pregnant with the power, but hiding. Pregnant with the promise, but hiding from the power. I want to speak to you this morning on five things that are highlighted by this text. The first is that you are preferred by position. Zechariah was just one ordinary priest from the tribe of Levi doing ordinary duties. That was the remit of the priest. He just happened to be in the temple that morning because it was his time. And it was in that position that the angel appeared to him. I want to say to somebody, there is a promise coming your way. But if you are not in your place, when the 
promise is ready to be delivered. You are not going to receive it. There is a priest who was God was waiting to bless with a great anointing. But he or she has stepped out of place. And I want to say to you, the same can happen to you. But you need to remain in the house of God, in the temple of God, believing in the coming of Christ. And the Bible said to them that look for him, shall he appear? It's not enough to say it. You must act. I must act like we believe. We must stand in our places and worship Jesus. Because at that time appointed, according to the scripture, the signs we see are fulfilling before our eyes. And everything is being set in place. Not for the manifestation of the Antichrist, but for the return of Jesus. And only those who are in their rightful place, the Bible says, they that are alive and remain, preferred by position, preferred by position, the power will come when you are standing in your right position. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. The second thing, if you are pregnant beyond desire, the Bible says they were well stricken with age. They were long past the time of menopause and women of pause and peak menopause, if you want to put that one in. They had gone past the point where biology and medicine would deem it possible that they could bring food. But we are not talking about the doctors of earth. We are talking about the God of life who can step down in the midst of nothing and say, let there be. He can peep inside a barren womb and say, life. What God has in store for us to do is not because of our desire to do it. It's because we are standing in our right place and available to him. When God wants to work, if you can't find a prophet, he talk to a donkey. I praise the name of Jesus. I praise the name of Jesus. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. And if God wants to bless, here is not going to search for those who have not made themselves present here. He's going to come to those who have chosen to remain faithful. And the power and manifestation of the Holy Ghost in this end time is going to be evident. Not because God turned up late, but because people waited patiently. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says you know your calling. Not the wise. Not the educated. Not the influential, not the movers and shakers, not those who have society by the scruff of the neck, not those who are in the who's who and if what. God is going to show his power to those who look for him. There is a people who decide that God is God all the time. And they are going to remain in the house of God. Old man Simeon was well old in age. But he had gotten a promise. He had heard he was going to see the Messiah. He was not living to get a new, to a new level. He was not living to get some new position. He was not working he to get some new possession. He was just waiting. And as soon as his eyes beheld the baby, he said, God, all right, we can't go on. I know. Pregnant beyond desire. God is going to incite some barren wombs inside here. And I'm not talking about in the physical sense. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. There are some persons here who wonder if God will ever walk on Wildman Street again. Let me say to you, he never left.
pregnant beyond desire. A blessing name of Jesus. Promise beyond ability. Oh, bless God. I would be willing to bet, though the Bible doesn't tell me, but I'd be willing to bet that Elizabeth was not the only woman in her city. I would also be willing to bet that she was not the youngest. I'd be willing to bet that in that city, there were many women in the prime of childbearing age. But God does not work on human ability. In fact, God prefers human inability because it demonstrates celestial majesty. When God wants to make something, he doesn't call for raw material. He creates something out of nothing. So you want a king? Let me give you first choice. Take your king. Tall. Standing head and shoulders. Above the rest. Watch what becomes of him. Now hold on. My turn now. Let me choose a king. Don't look in the army. That man him shoulder broad like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the prime. Him too big. He must think he's his strength. That one tall like he's a basketballer. Him will work. He will think he's in height. I tell you what. Go round the backside of backside and find a little shepherd boy. Smell like shepherd boy. Bring him come. And read the Bible carefully. God never said beard him first and change him clothes. Because when the anointing goes upon your life, it doesn't matter where you've been before. You become sanctified. You become cleansed and chosen by the power of the Almighty God. God is not choosing you because of your academic credential. God is not choosing you because of your parental status. God is not choosing you because you're uptown or out of town or round town or your own town. God chooses you because God has a purpose and you are the one he has chosen. You are not the best candidate. So don't become boastful. But God has chosen you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Promise beyond ability. Oh, so you look around. And you say, man, when we can get back on our foot. All who used to do this gone. And all who used to do that gone. And all who used to do the other gone. Let me tell you something. Just present yourself and you'll be surprised when God says, I want you to do what? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Purpose beyond expectations. Praise God. A couple of lepers were kicked out of the city. Because they were lepers. Left outside to die. And they reasoned among themselves. If we go back into the city, they're going to kill us. If we stay outside here, hunger is going to kill us. So option one, we get killed. Option two, we die. Option three, part A, we die. Part B, we get food. There's a hope. Let's go there. The Bible said as they were walking toward the Assyrian camp, when the Assyrians heard the thunder from their footsteps, amplified by equipment that you can't get in music mart, by the power of God, they said the Israelites have hired the Hittites and the Egyptians against us. The two most powerful armies at that time, four limping lepers, sounded like they were coming. When they got to the camp, it was empty. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Promise beyond ability. Don't wait to think that you first have to have it. 
before God can use it. God can start using it before you even have it. And when it's finishing, you're the remnant. We have a multitude to feed. Where you have out there, boy, one little boy. And God, thank God it was my son. Because it was my son by the time Jesus done preaching food done. A little boy had five loaves and two fishes. Bring it to me. One of them said, what is that among so many? You know what time I think about that scripture? I say to myself, what is the likelihood that in the midst of almost 10,000 people, only one bring food? Five thousand men plus women and children and only one of food. But I call them other people and bring food. But they near me talk before the service is done. And so when Jesus wanted to work a miracle, it was the one who was more interested in, in filling the spiritual belly than the physical belly. He's, he is the one mentioned in scripture. Jesus said, take it to me. So you don't worry about whether or not it look adequate. Bring them to me. Pastor, don't worry about whether or not them, they don't they look adequate. Carry them to Jesus. Because when it's done, you're going to have enough for him. And 12 baskets full. Send some of them come King Street. I need them. Promise beyond ability. Praise the name of Jesus. Purpose beyond expectations. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, our prayers are built to fit inside mental boxes. So we first create a receptacle for the answer, then we pray. And you'll be surprised how many times God turns up with the answer. And when he can roll in the box and go back home with it. Can't hold. That makes sense. We need to start serving a God. Who has more than we want. Much more than we'll ever need. More on top of that. And more on top of the more on top of that. We need to serve the God who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all we are able to ask or even think. The Bible says I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Stop telling God how much to walk with and tell him to come. The writer said, even so, come Lord Jesus. And when you turn up, we'll take what you have. Praise the name of Jesus. Purpose beyond our expectations. Here was Elizabeth, pregnant with the forerunner of Jesus. Here was a woman whose delivery would start the time clock for the coming of Messiah. Here was a woman who could say with certainty that the Messiah is real because someone told me that my baby will go before him. But she was hiding. She was hiding. Lord, I don't want to get in the jerk up in case me lose my baby. God tell Abraham to kill him. And the Bible said that he believed that God was able to raise him from the dead. If the angel said, this will be the forerunner 
of Jesus. I can jump off a cliff. He cannot die. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Purpose beyond our expectations. Is it possible that when Elizabeth remember all the affliction that Elijah went through and she heard that this child was going to be a reenactment of all that. If you remember later on in scripture, when the disciples are wholesale described that Elijah must come first, Jesus said he has already come. And they have done to him what their mind had previously purposed. Because every prophet that God has sent to Israel had been mistreated. Is it possible that Elizabeth was afraid that her little bouncing baby boy is it possible you are afraid to step out into the power of God because you are cautious? I wonder if, suppose them, is it possible? Is it possible that you are down there pregnant with a promise of God? But you are so afraid of suffering for the name of Jesus that you'd rather remain in the corner so that nobody notices you. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, if you love your life, you lose it. But if you give up your life for his sake and the gospel's sake in the world to come, you have eternal life. Don't hide it. Expose it to the public. You know something? There's a little Indian shop next door to where we worship at King Street. And one day, I was speaking to one of the proprietors. And he said, me not come over your shop. So I said, why not? Over your church. He said, why not? He said, come, me no one God beat me. I said, what? He said, every time I come, I say, but I cry. God have beat you, no. Me no one God beat me. If he knew what we felt, brother Steve, when we are crying, he would have run inside there. But fear, fear, if you knew what God has promised for your life, you would step out of that situation. You would give it up and run to Jesus. Paul, it is said according to church tradition, came from a rich family. But when he was exposed to the majesty of Christ, he said, I count it all, but don't. For the excellency of knowing Christ. When are you going to step out and come into the purpose beyond what you expect? Pray the name of Jesus and finally power beyond imagination. You look like one of them. Me? No, nah, sir. We don't know you. But you sound like it. Listen, my man. Listen, my the man that draw me tongue. But me sure me see amongst them. I can't say it on the mic, Pastor. <laughs> but Jesus came back and said, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this man who cursed and swore and denied Jesus was the one who stood up before the Sanhedrin and said, that whether it seem good in your sight to whoever God or man you judge, as for me, we can only do the things that we have seen and heard. This was Peter, who was too afraid to suffer with Christ, but when he received the power, he was willing to die for Christ. Power! Beyond your wildest imagination is 
dipped into your life when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Power beyond what you have been taught by your teachers. Power beyond what you have dreamed in your most vivid dream. Power that if you could daydream from now until the end of next year, you could not believe what Jesus can do when you surrender your life wholly to him. Power beyond your imagination. She was hiding for five months. When Mary came to her, in fact, she would have been six months pregnant because the angel said it's a six month with her who was called Barren. The Bible says the child will be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. That's what the Bible said, what the angel said to Zechariah. But when Mary showed up with this one month old fetus in her womb, not only the baby, but the mother was filled with the Holy Ghost. When Jesus steps into a situation and starts to manifest the majesty of his glory beyond what you had expected. So you're praying for your son and when Jesus comes, son, husband, daughter, neighbor, dog, Power beyond your wildest imagination. But if we have the promise and hide from the power, I want to say it will happen to us. As he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophet and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How oh, often would I have gathered you together under my wing, as a hen gathered her brood, and you would not. Now your city is left to you desolate, because you knew not the time of your visitation. When Mary hailed Elizabeth, she recognized the time of her visitation, and she came out to meet her. I'm saying to you some this morning, someone, Jesus. I said, this is your hour of visitation. Will you step out to meet him? Or will you continue hiding from the power of God? Bless you. In Jesus' name. We have heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'd love to invite someone to the altar. You are without the Holy Ghost this morning or today, and you'd love to receive him. Will you come? Extending an invitation today to those who are without the Holy Ghost. You know you need the Holy Spirit. Don't wait another moment. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Come on to Jesus. Give him your life today. Come on to Jesus. Let Is there another? 
You are without the Holy Ghost today, but you'd love to receive him. Will you come? Come to Jesus today. Give him your life today. Come on to Jesus. Let him have his way. Thank you, Jesus. making their way to this altar. There is someone else. The Lord is talking to you. Will you come? We want to pray with you today. who will make a step. of God just to draw closer as we worship the Lord with those who have come. They have acknowledged their need of the Spirit of God and have, have come to seek Him. I'd love for us to draw closer so we can spend some time in prayer with them. Could we come please? And the altar is still open. If you're in your seat, you have not yet received the Holy Ghost. The Lord is talking to you. Come. Will we come, saints? 
Oh 
surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence.
to worship Thee. For you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone doth my spirit yield. You Bye. 
opportunity to give, for the opportunity to be able to lift our hands. 
and praise him. Could we all just give him thanks today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And just before we leave this place, we're going to ask Sister Norda Stevenson to come. And she's going to pray the closing prayer. And just to remind us that this evening, 6 o'clock, prayer, followed by our Sunday school end of year program. Please come and take someone with you. Could we all bow our heads, please? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your visitation here today. We thank you, Lord, for your special blessings. We thank you for your word that you sent, Lord, to remind us that we have power. Lord, we are not just pregnant with the promise, but we have power and we have access. And we need to just grasp, Lord Jesus, what you have given to us and to use it to bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, we bless you for your speaker, Lord, your servant who delivered your word. We thank you, Lord, for those who responded to the invitation at the altar. And even now, Lord, as they stand before you, I pray, God, that you just continue to have your way in their hearts. You are the mighty baptizer in the Holy Ghost. You are the one, Lord Jesus, who is able to transform lives. And so even now, Lord, we commit them to you. We pray, God, that you continue to stir their hearts, Lord. And even in their personal devotion as they reach out to you, that, Lord, you would really just visit them in a special, special way. And, Lord Jesus, you will fill the longing of their hearts and baptize them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all our guests, Lord. We thank you for those who were physically here, as well as those who viewed us via live stream today. We thank you for all our members who turned out this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, Lord, upon us. And even now, Lord, as we turn to go to return again, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would go with us. We pray for your covering and your protection that you will take your people safely to wherever they desire to go even now. We pray, God, that you would bring us back in good time later just to have a great time in your house, just lifting up your name. Lord, cover us, we pray. Continue, Lord Jesus, just to be our guide. And we promise you, Lord, to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Let's greet each other before we leave this place.